Alright folks, it's Matthew. We are here again, and we're now going to do another case in Grimsboro, but this time, this is the only case that I did not film in Elite Mode. So now I'm going to go into Collection Mode, see if I can earn some more secret packs. I figure that, you know, since I have over 41,000 energy, I might as well do it. <clears throat> oh hi Matthew, come on, look at this video. It's the funniest thing I've ever seen. Look, there's this kid and his bro- Look, there's this kid, and there's his brother, and he's gonna bite. Whoa, what's happening? Did Ramirez try to plug his heating slippers again? It's not just the station, it's a general blackout. The entire historical center is in the dark. Apparently the blackout was caused by an overload coming from 301 Shelley Street, but no one knows why. Well, it's not like we can do anything from here, so Ranger Matthew and I might as well go take a look, so to speak. 301 Shel Shelley Street, let's go. God, did someone leave something on the stove? It stinks like burned meat in here. Let's see if the power's back on. I can feel a switch right here. Holy crap! What the hell is that? Is that a body? Quick, Matthew, we have to close out the area and try to find out what happened. I was a complete idiot, and he was a complete gentleman. Or maybe he's gay. I don't think he's gay. And since I am under... I saw the way he looked at you. Since I am under a happy hour, I'm going to do this. But since I both, I need to do something. Okay, got that taken care of. Then she meets these I'm pretty sure I think I have this down to a science now. I'm going to try and handle things a little differently. Victim's body. Electrical machine. There we are. To have a good dad, Brad, you have to be all knowing and all seeing. What the hell happened in this garage? Did this girl get fried alive? Let's send the body to Nathan. And this is a machine that was connected to the victim. It electrocuted her so badly she literally burned. It's our murder weapon for sure. Crap, the panel seems locked. Can you take a look at it, Matthew? And we have to find the owner of this house as quickly as possible. What the hell are you doing in my home? Who gave you permission to enter? Speaking of the devil, stop right here, sir. We found a dead body inside your garage, and we've got some questions for you. Okay. We'll begin the autopsy now. I'll get the, I'll get the stars and then I'll take care of everything else. Okay. Got myself six stars. Let's talk to Victor Wallcraft. Mr. Wallcraft, can you tell us what a dead body is doing in your garage? Who was this girl and why did you kill her? I just arrived, officers. I have no idea what happened. What body are you talking about? This is ridiculous. I never kill anyone. I'm talking about the girl that got fried alive on your freaking torture device. Tell me why Ranger Matthew shouldn't arrest you now. I have a permit for this machine, officers. It is all perfectly legal. I'll let you know that I'm a respected scientist and that I would never hurt a human being. And this torture device, as you call it, is an electronic revolution. It's a prototype designed to study the activity of the brain with an accuracy never attained before. It's all very interesting, Dr. Frankenstein, but what are those notes you're holding on so strongly? Do they have to do with your experiments? What? 
my notes? What notes? Oh, these notes. Here, take them. My conscience is clear. I have nothing to do with this murder. So, let's see what's written on the notes that crazy scientist Victor Wolcraft gave us, Matthew. The first one says, Day 1, start of the experiment. What? There's pages missing. Look, one page has been torn off. Maybe there's still some trace of it left on the next page. Do your magic, Matthew. Oh, there we are. Only fives. I gotta do better than that. Great job revealing what the missing note says, Matthew. So what's written on it? Day three, collecting samples. What the hell does this all mean? And look, there's a map. Apparently it's a map of the Ellington Pet Cemetery, and one of the graves is marked down. I think it's time for us to take a little walk to Ellington Pet Cemetery, partner. Let's see what Victor wanted from that grave. Investigate this thing first. There we are. Sixteen, that's more like it. Great, you managed to open the machine we found linked to this poor girl. Let's see what's inside. Holy, I've never seen that many buttons in my life. I don't even know where to begin with all those gauges. A space shuttle must be easier to control. You're right, Matthew. This machine must have been used to electrocute the victim. Look, it's all pushed to the maximum voltage. No wonder this machine caused the blackout. Let's send it to Alex. I'm sure he'll be thrilled to take on this challenge. Twelve hours. Here we are, Ellington Pet Cemetery, the location Victor marked in his research papers. The cemetery is named after Ellington, William Cooper's beloved dog. You remember him, Matthew? He's Grimsboro's founding father. When his dog passed away, he had this pet cemetery created. Cooper really loved his dog. He even started the annual dog pageant in its honor. And now you've seen how seriously people take this pageant around here. But enough of city stories. We're here to solve a murder, so Victor marks a specific tombstone on the pet cemetery map. Let's try and find it, Matthew. Oh, what the heck. Just NCIS in the background, nothing to worry about. Okay, let's see here. <clears throat> Bone. Football. Balloon. Hat. Alphaba's grave. already. Okay? Here it is, the grave marks on Victor Wolcraft's research notes. Here lies Elphaba, 2005 to 2013. Apparently it's a little English bulldog. What did he want to do with this poor thing? The only way to know what Victor wanted is to dig the coffin up. 
Ranger Matthew, hello. I am Ivan Imlay, the humble gateskeeper of Ellington Pet Cemetery. Can I be of service? Hello, Mr. Imlay. We've heard about strange events happening in your cemetery. Can we ask you a few questions about it? Of course. I'll be happy to help the police any way I can. It will make a nice change from the dead. Okay, let's see. I'm down to three stars. In fact, let's talk to him right now. Mr. Imlay, we wanted to know if you've seen anything strange lately around here. We think the pet cemetery is linked to the murder of a young woman. A murder? Heavens, no. I didn't see anything. But what could a pet cemetery have to do with the girl's death? I mostly see grieving families looking for a quiet place to put their animals to rest. I have seen nothing out of the ordinary, I assure you. But maybe ask Fran Wolcraft. She's here almost as often as me. Maybe she has seen something. Fran Wolcraft? Is she related to Victor Wolcraft? Yes, she's his wife. She comes every day to pay her respects to her lost dog. She should be around. She should be somewhere around here. Hello, Ranger. How can I help you? Is something the matter? Mrs. Wolcraft, a young girl has been murdered in your home with one of your husband's experimental machines. Do you know anything about what might have happened? What are you talking about? That doesn't make any sense. My husband's experiments are harmless. You're talking nonsense, officers. Everything was normal when I left this morning. To be honest, officer, since my little darling dog has passed away, I haven't really paid attention to anything. It's just... It was all so sudden. We were training to compete in the annual dog pageant, and then... A heart attack, the doctor said. English bulldogs are a fragile breed. What I can tell you, officers, is that my husband is a scientist and that he respects life too much to ever take it. He's a good man. I know losing a dog can be hard, but mourning it for weeks? I mean, it's just a dog. But we better keep an eye on her, Matthew, considering what her husband does in their garage. Okay, let's examine the grave. If this means I have to get more stars, so be it. There we are. Cough coffin. Eleven energy. There it is. The poor little dog's the poor dog's little coffin. The one marked on Victor Wolcraft's notes. It's locked, so we have to open it to know what happened to the poor animal. Brave heart, Matthew. And yes, I will have to get some more stars. So, sit tight. Okay, got me one star. I wonder if that was all I needed. You unlock the coffin? Brace yourself, Matthew. I'm opening it. It's empty. What the hell? So there's no corpse inside the grave marks on Victor Wolcraft's notes. What does that mean, Matthew? Do you think do you think Victor Wolcraft would have dug up a dead dog to experiment on it? That would be mad, right? But we need more proof anyway. Yep, that's it. I'll let these two run their courses. See y'all later. Okay, folks, we're back. Let's get to the murder weapon. I don't know where the hell you found this machine, Matthew, but it was quite the challenge. Still, I managed to decipher the activation sequence. 
this machine is overly complicated to activate. You have to change the wires and turbines and everything. You have to have a stellar knowledge in engineering to start it. There were also several security measures to prevent any unwanted start of the machine. They were all bypassed, of course. All in all, your murderer must have, must have serious engineering knowledge. There's no way this machine was activated by accident. And let's go ahead and speed this up. It cost me four. While the cause of death is quite obvious, the poor girl was electrocuted. Normally a proper electrocution doesn't leave any trace on the body, but your victim literally fried alive. The poor girl, it must have hurt like hell. Did you find anything else? A detail that might help us find our killer? Well, I can tell you that the machine couldn't sustain the voltage and overheated producing sparks that flew all over the room. Your killer must have overlooked this. Apart from the burned face, you can see spots where the victim's clothes and the skin underneath got burned. There were a lot of sparks, especially next to the machine. I can assure you that your killer can't have escaped those sparks, which means they have burned skin. So, as Nathan said, we have to check our suspects for burn marks. But if they come from sparks, it means they can be quite small and easy to hide. Asking all our suspects to take off their shirts will take ages. You're right, Matthew, there's a better solution. We'll need Ramirez, of course. Did someone say my name? Can I help you, Ranger Matthew? Do you need something? Ramirez, Ranger Matthew is a very delicate mission for you. You are to check all the suspects on our investigation for burn marks. Think you can handle it? Yes. Yes, you'll see, Ranger Matthew. I'll do great. You'll be proud, I promise. So, let's try to summarize all that happened so far in this investigation, Matthew. We have an unidentified victim discovered electrocuted inside Victor Wolcraft's makeshift laboratory. And on his research notes, he has marked the grave of a dog, and as we saw, the corpse was nowhere to be seen. What can the link between our murder and a missing dog corpse? What can be the link between our murder and a missing dog corpse? I have no idea. If only we could find this damn dog. Ranger Matthew, thank God you're here. I found something at the cemetery. Calm down, Ivan. What's happening? And what are you carrying? It stinks. It seems like... like death. That's because it is, sir. It's the corpse of a dog I found under blankets. But there's something really strange about it. It's... it's been stitched up. Like someone tried to repair it or something. But I'm pretty sure it's Elphaba, Fran Wolcroft's... Wolcroft's dog. God, what the... We'll bring it to Nathan. We're going to check if it's really the same dog. It's the least you can do for this poor creature. Six hours. And I'll get the results tomorrow morning. See you all then. Alright folks, we're back. The dog corpse has run its course. What can you tell us on this poor dog Ivan brought us from the cemetery, Nathan? Is it Alfaba, the one whose coffin we dug up? Well, I compared the corpse tissues, corpse tissues with the DNA traces inside the coffin, and I can affirm you they're a match. It's Alfaba, or at least part of it. Great, so we can... Sorry, what did you say? Did you say part of it? Grip yourself tight, Matthew, because what I'm about to tell you is going to blow your mind. This dog has been reconstructed. Not only did I find tissues from Elphaba's corpse, I can tell you that some bones belong to other animals. Do you understand what I mean, Matthew? Someone tried to reanimate this dog. What? Can you tell us why you suddenly quit in the middle of the semester? Is that what he told you? Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, it's all right. Joanne, the detectives are asking about Rick Sims. It's like I got three sticker packs for Grimsboro. And I'll see you guys for Chapter 2. Alright folks, we're back. Start Chapter 2 of the Wolcraft Creature. Chapter 2 in Collection Mode. Nathan, are you really saying that the dead dog we found at the cemetery has been reconstructed using other animals' body parts? And if you say this corpse matches the dead dog of our main suspect, then it means Victor Wolcraft exhumated and butchered his own dog. How could someone be so mental? 
The human mind is capable of much horror. We've seen it at work more than once. I analyzed the tissues of those other animals and what I found is sickening. The DNA from those tissues and bones doesn't match any known species living today. It matches species that have been extinct for thousands of years. Really? So it means that Victor Wallcrash has collected them from a museum, right? We'll have to check in. Ranger Matthew, we found the identity of your victim. Her name is Claire Godwin. She works at the Grimsboro Museum as a guide. She stated on the record as an animal rights activist. An animal rights activist? Maybe that's the link we were looking for. We're looking for between our murder and the experiment on Alfava. Quick, Matthew, let's go to the museum. You could lose your teaching license. The second I thought something was going on, I went to the administration. And they told me they would handle it. Ever since you've arrested the museum curator, Matthew, I must admit things have been quite different around here. Let's see if you can find where the bones and tissues from extinct species that served to reconstruct Alfaba's body came from. Three weeks ago, Joanne, the head of the upper school, called me into the headmaster's office. And they said that a student had made an accusation against me. And you have no idea who it was, what they were accusing you of. No, okay. they wouldn't tell me. And in this system, to be accused is to be guilty. And so, you just decided to resign? Yeah, and I shouldn't have. I left a job I loved, my wife left me and I got beat up. I had to guess. My parent found out that he molested their kid, beat the crap out of him, and they did a fucking gay bash. I don't even know if they did anything. He was accused and not understand. Yeah, I don't make him his predator. The best predators? Blend in. When even two of his fellow teachers, Natalie Relay and Joanne Parsons, think he's guilty. Only one clue. Uh, in the meantime, I accessed the school's online parent directory. They're lawyers. Okay. Hedge fund guys. So, did you find anything that might be linked to our dead dog? This pile of bones is a great place to start. And I noticed that one of the museum guys' name was Percy Wolcraft. Just how many members does this family have? We have to talk to him. So someone from that school lives in the Bronx? At New Jersey. And yeah, the kid's father... And I'll get the remaining stars first. Let's sit tight. Okay, I'm going to take care of the bones first. Hopefully I can get this done. We both know that something happened with Luca. Maybe. Before they cross against Sims, we need to be absolutely sure of what... Mr. Sims made me stay after class. How many times do I have to keep saying the same thing? Listen, I understand this is difficult, but we need to be sure of exactly what happened. Stop calling my son a liar. He is Ms. traumatized Dabba, by this. There are some inconsistencies we need to clear up. Just ask your questions. Okay. Luca? So, Mr. Sims pulled out his penis. Yes. Did he drop his pants or just threw the zipper? He dropped his pants. So then what happened? He, 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 he asked me to touch it, but I didn't, so then he touched himself. Okay. Was he erect? I guess. I guess. Okay. Can you describe his penis? I don't know if he's circumcised or uncircumcised. Can, can you answer that question? No, I don't remember. Did you see his penis at all? No. Yes. Uh, and you're confusing him. Yeah. Son, you're going to have to go in front of the grand jury.
pretty obvious that this is going to be one. Great job restoring the skeleton, Matthew. But look, it isn't isn't it missing a leg? Then maybe the missing bones have been used to recreate Elphaba. Let's send the skeleton to David Jones, leave the skeleton alone. Holy crap, you almost made me drop it. What are you doing here, Constance? Shouldn't you be at the library? I'm replacing the curator that you put in jail, remember? The mayor thought I was the only one competent of the city personnel. Which explains a lot about the state of this city. Now, if you're done degrading invaluable artifacts, maybe you could tell me what brings you here, Matthew. Don't let Jones' bad influence get to you. She has a birthmark. I thought I should have a question. Can I take my phone home now? Very good. Just give me a minute. Talk to Constance Bell. Have you noticed that this skeleton we found in the museum was missing bones, Constance? We have evidence that someone has stolen them for an experiment. Why should I care? I have a diploma in foreign languages, not in museum keeping. The only thing I did since I arrived was to fire one of the guides, Claire Godwin, yesterday. When I said I wanted to set up a taxidermist exhibition, she started freaking out, saying that taxidermy was cruelty towards animals, that it should be illegal, blah, blah, blah. I can tell you that girl was out the door 30 minutes later. She didn't even clear up her locker. That's... that's not really nice, Constance. You could have given her the time to... That's all that girl deserved. She should have been glad to just do her job. Thing is, now I'm stuck with a strange letter for her. It arrived just a few minutes after she stormed out. Here, I might as well give it to you, Ranger Matthew. I'm sure it'll help your investigation. So our victim got fired from her job at the museum just before she was murdered, and she was supposed to receive this letter. It's still sealed, so I wouldn't take my chance with it. It's anonymous, and if it comes from her killer, who knows what's inside? Let's send the letter to Grace. He's Better safe than sorry. In my 19th century English Has he ever been to your home? No, never. Why are you asking me that? Did, did Luca tell you that? He's, he's lying. Well, he described your bed. Okay, 12 hours. And your book of poetry. And let's talk to know? Percy Wolcraft. Well, I, I don't know. I, Percy Wolcraft, you're Victor and Fran's son, I, I presume. Do you know what happened at your father's laboratory? Yes, I do. Sorry, officers. I don't know how I can help you. I can't understand how anyone would hurt my poor Claire. Your poor Claire? You mean you were a couple? Did your parents know about her? Claire and I met at university during my thesis on engineering. She was hosting a rally against animal testing. But I never talked about her to my parents. They don't even know she was my girlfriend. They can't be bothered by anything that's not dad's work or mom's dog. Here I saw Claire's handbag. She forgot it in the staff room yesterday. If it can help you, then take it. Boy, did that, boy, did that experiment take long. There we are. That's much better. 19 energy already. 
So, what did you find inside our victim's handbag, Matthew? Holy crap, it's one of Victor Wolcraft's research notes. What the hell is it doing inside Claire's handbag? We have to know why Claire would have stolen it. Let's read it, Matthew. Day 7. Hmm. Day 7. The experiment is moving at a slower pace than expected. Subject 1 doesn't react to treatment to the treatment and the decomposition is taking its toll on the members. Fran had to extract new samples to replace the decomposed members of Subject 1, but we have little time before the vital functions become compromised. Meanwhile, Subject 1 is going to be kept inside the garage in a refrigerated compartment. It's the only thing we can do. I hope, I hope I'm not making a mistake. Fran has become obsessed with the experiment. I can't imagine how she'll react if it fails. What's this all about? An experiment kept in the garage? Oh god, he must be talking about Ofaba. Did Claire know something about it? We better make another visit to the Wallcraft garage. To the Wallcraft's garage. After you, Matthew. Diploma, France, mustache, first aid kit, there we go. Kind of forgot how long that bone sample would take. So what did you find? A diploma? I can't read what's on it. It must be a few years old. Can you look at it? What are you doing here? Can't you leave us alone? Mrs. Wallcraft, are you alright? What's happening? You can't understand. No one can understand. What the hell is she talking about? Quick, Matthew, we better talk to her. Joanne Parsons is resting at home. Okay. Mrs. Wallcraft, please calm down. What's happening? It's my dog, my dear little Alfaba. She's gone. She's disappeared. I can't find her anywhere. We're sorry about that, Mrs. Wallcraft, but we had to proceed to an excavation. We're the ones who dug up Alfaba's grave. What are you talking about? What hole? What excavation? What have you done to my darling's grave? Tell me. We dug up Elphaba's grave for the investigation, but her coffin, her coffin was empty. Of course it was empty! How the hell were we supposed to reanimate her if we didn't have her body? Now give her back! Give her back! What's happening here? Fran, please, my darling, please calm down. They have Elphaba. They stole an Elphaba. Is it true, Ranger Matthew? You found Elphaba? Yes, we did. And you know exactly in which state we found her, don't you, Dr. Wolfcraft? Brown, please go back inside. I have to talk to Ranger Mountie about the experiment. She left her That's when Joanne just fell apart. When a fellow teacher got married. Well, I think she felt she lost a friend. Joanne really belongs in another era. This one is Talk to Victor Wolfcraft. Your dog Alfaba has been found at the pet cemetery, grossly reconstructed with stolen bones and other cadavers' body parts, Victor. Is this your work? It is, yes. When Alfaba died, Fran was heartbroken. They had trained so hard for the dog pageant. It was an obsession. I couldn't watch my wife in such a state, so I dug up old theories on reanimation and decided to give it a shot. Fran went on board right away. Wait, you actually thought you could reanimate your dead dog? No, wait, don't answer that one. 
For God's sake, what the hell have we fallen into? We've analyzed your machine, Victor, and we discovered that the voltage used to kill Claire caused it to produce sparks. Can you show us your torso so we can check for burns? There. Are you happy now? The machine isn't perfect. It burned me during a previous experiment. But I wouldn't kill anyone, Ranger Matthew. You have to believe me. I'm trying to bring back life. I never wanted to take it away. This is the craziest story I've heard. And we had a vampire in custody reanimating their dog? And if Claire knew of this experiment as an animal rights activist, she may have tried to stop it. That would explain her gruesome and... But we can't arrest anyone yet. Now with the evidence we have, we have to keep digging, Matthew. Bonnie, he's never seen me undressed. He's never... So someone else has. Is it possible that... I think that's five. Else that you were involved with you? It's not what you think. So what's written on this diploma you found? Grand Prize of Engineering, and it's attributed to Victor and Fran Wolcraft. I didn't think they would share that kind of hobby, but to each their own. So not only Victor, but Fran too had the knowledge required to activate the machine that killed Claire. We have to keep it in mind, Matthew. Okay, I'll let the anonymous letter run its course. See you off later. All right, folks, we're back. I'm going to go ahead and speed this up a little bit for four. So I took a look at the anonymous letter Claire Godwin was supposed to receive, but I couldn't collect any relevant sample that might help the investigation. The letter itself is written in German and can be translated into, if you don't keep quiet, you won't see another day. Typical threatening letter. Threatening matter. Then it must come from our killer, and they followed their menace in the most horrible of fashion. But we now know... But we know now that they speak German. Great job, Grace. Ramirez, have you checked all of our suspects for burn marks as Ranger Matthew asked you? Yes, sir. I went to see them all. And I can tell you that Mrs. Wolcraft and her son Percy both have burn marks. They both said it was the result of one of Victor Wolcraft's experiments. The, the grave digger, Mr. Imlay, has some too, caused by a faulty lawnmower. And I have other news, Ranger Matthew. I made a background check on Mr. and Mrs. Wolcraft following that German letter you found. I learned that they're actually German immigrants, naturalized before the birth of their son, so they will know how to speak German. That's really smart of you, Ramirez. Thanks a bunch. Ranger Matthew, we have someone... Ranger Matthew, you have to help us. Please, please, do something. What, what's happening now, Mrs. Wolcraft? It's Percy, officers. He came back home after work, and he and Victor had an argument about that dead girl. They were screaming so loudly. And then, and then he ran away. We can't find him anywhere. Please, Ranger Matthew, you have to find my son. Okay, and I'll see you guys for chapter three, but I'll start that in a, in a while, because I'm down about three minutes left of filming on my tablet, so sit tight, folks. All right, folks, we're back. Let's start chapter three of the Wallcraft Creature in collection mode. It's cost me two stars. You have to find Percy Ranger Matthew. He ran away just after arguing with his father about that girl who died in our garage. Don't worry, Mrs. Wolcraft. Ranger Matthew will find him. Please sit down. Ramirez will take care of you. Matthew, we have to find Percy as soon as possible. His disappearance most certainly has something to do with his girlfriend's death. Let's first look at the museum, see if Constance might have an idea where he went.
Uh oh. Claire's locker. Where is it? No. There it is. Spider web. What did you find, Matthew? Our victim's locker. Yes, you're right. Constance mentioned she didn't have time to clean it before getting fired. We need to have a look at it. And speaking of the devil, Constance is still here. Percy was under her supervision. Maybe she knows where he dis where he's disappeared to. Let's talk to her. Well, first of all, I'm going to get some stars, so sit tight. Okay. Now let's talk to Constance Bell about it. Got me some stars. Constance, we're really sorry to bother you again, but Percy Wallcratch has run away. Do you have an idea of where he might be? Why would I? I mean, the poor boy. He lost his girlfriend and his parents are a bunch of freaks. It's a marvel he didn't run away either. Run away earlier. It's not funny, Constance. His mother is devastated. Really? I thought Fran Wallcraft honestly didn't care about that kid. I talked to her a couple of times since I studied German, and she never struck me as a sentimental. Very well. Percy's venting off in the staff room. You're hiding him, but why? Why not? He's a hard-working kid, and he needed a place to hide from his parents, and he never put sauce on one of my books. Unlike you, David Jones. Uh-oh. Who would have thought that Constance Bell could be compassionate? Anyway, let's talk to Percy. We have to have him go back to his mother as soon as possible. Let's talk to Percy. What do you want? Leave me alone. Your mother's worried sick, Percy. At least let her know you're alright. They're crazy. We're all crazy. You saw what they did to El Faba. What twisted version, vision of love my parents share. Claire, she told me that I had to help her denounce them. I tried, but they're my parents. I just can't betray them. Once she gave me some of my father's notes in German to translate, and when I realized what they were really doing with El Faba's corpse... My dad, he tried to convince me that it was only to help my mother move on, but it killed Claire. This freaking experiment killed her. Torn photo. The new case is out now, but I will have this posted by the time I get to it. A torn up photograph, but I can't see what's pictured on it. Do you think you can put it back together, Matthew? And the good news is I am getting all these coins, and I am sharing them as much as I can because I do want to get cards. As much as a fan I am of this, I am disappointed that they did not, that they took away the food rewards. There we are, 14. Great job restoring the photograph you found in Claire's locker, Matthew. So what does it show? It's a photograph taken inside Victor Wallcraft's garage. Why would Claire hide this inside her locker? And why would she tear it up? Add to that the research notes that we found inside her handbag. 
She must have been gathering evidence against Victor, but to what end? So we've got Claire's photograph of the Wallcraft's garage. And Percy's confession about how they both try to stop his parents. That's one messy affair, Matthew. Maybe we should take another look at the pet cemetery, Matthew. Ivan may have discovered Alphaba's corpse, but we still don't know who put it back there. Cash. Blood, bloody bark. There we are. Alright. Got a king of spades. So what do we have here, Matthew? This blood stain seems dried out, but it's quite large. We should collect a sample of it. And I can see Ivan over there, still looking over the cemetery. I think we should interrogate him again. If Fran was really digging corpses here, he had to know about it. Let's talk to Ivan Imlay first. Tell me, Ivan, how close were you with Mrs. Wolcrat? She dug up her dog in your cemetery, and as you said, you see everything that happens here. Of course I knew she dug up her, dug her dog up. I, did I want to protect her by not saying anything? I guess I did. I mean, Fran is a special kind of woman. We used to talk about engineering theories together since I studied engineering in college. Then she became obsessed with nonsense about reanimation, but I didn't think much of it. However, after I found that poor dog's body all stitched up, I realized what they were really trying to do. It was all going too far. For Fran's sake, it all had stopped. I didn't think twice and I brought the corpse back to you immediately, but I did keep something from you. This camera was just under the corpse. Maybe the person who dumped Alfaba's body here is the same person who killed this girl. It's more useful in your hands. I'm going to do the bark now. Fifteen. Did you manage to collect enough blood from this tree, Matthew? Perfect. It seems to have dried out, but I guess it'll be okay. Let's send it to Grace, see if she can salvage anything from it. Twelve hours. And? Let's get the camera. So Ivan want to protect Fran then? I'd rather think she would have knocked him with a shovel if he had, no if he had shown himself. Anyway, let's look at... Let's look at that camera Ivan found on her Alphaba's body, Matthew. It's an old device, so there's no memory card inside, but maybe it can, be a, can still be of help. Look, Matthew, you're right. There's something written on it. Can you decipher it? Property of Claire Godwin. So what's the inscription you discovered on the camera Ivan gave us, Matthew? Property of Claire Godwin. It's Claire's camera? Quick, let's give it to Alex. There may still be some data inside this thing. Twelve 
12 hours also. I'll get both results tomorrow and put a killer behind bars. So for now, this is Matthew. See you then. All right, folks, we're back. Let's finish out the Wolcraft creature and put a killer behind bars. Analyze the blood you found on the tree back at the cemetery, and I can tell you it doesn't come from a human being. In fact, I compared it with the blood of the poor little dog you found, and it's a match. The person who brought it back at the cemetery must have hit the tree while carrying it. So I took a better look at the corpse and some of the stitches on the head. And some of the stitches on the head are gone. The blood must have come from there. The killer must have carried it in their arms. So I tried calculating the height of this person, taking into account that they were carrying the corpse against their torso, and I found out that your killer must be six foot tall. And the camera. So Alex, did you find something interesting inside Claire's camera? Well, as you've noticed, Matthew, this is the camera that gives you the picture automatically, so there's no data inside. But you're lucky. The device malfunctioned, and the last photograph got stuck inside it. I developed it, and half of it is obscured by a hand, as if it was taken during a struggle. It must be your killer. It's a shaky close-up on an eye, with no other recognizable element. Claire must have had the presence of mind to try to take a picture of her aggressor, so I can tell you the killer has brown eyes. This is it, Matthew. Time to put Claire's killer behind bars. It's not Victor Wallcraft. It is not Ivan Imlay. It is not Fran Wallcraft. It's Percy Wolcraft. I must admit, Percy, of all the people involved in this case, you're not the one I suspected the most. Why the hell did you kill Claire? I didn't mean to. I mean, I got carried away. The whole situation was a mess. I came back to the house because I'd forgotten my lunch and she was there. Claire, what are you doing here? What are you doing? Are you taking pictures of my dad's lab? I'm doing what I should have done weeks ago. I'm going to expose all this madness to the police. Your family is crazy and you're all going down. What are you talking about, baby? We're going to bring my father to reason and there will be no more experiments. Isn't that what you want? It's not just your dad. Your mom helps him. Hell, I'm pretty sure it was her idea in the first place. And the bones that are missing from the museum... Percy, where are they? Tell me. Claire, please calm down. You don't want to hurt us, do you? We just want to reason my dad. You don't want to hurt us. I'm going to tell everyone what sick, mad people you all are. They're going to stop you, and they're going to destroy you, because that's all you deserve. You can't stop me. No, Claire, you won't. I can't let you do that. So I stopped her. I knocked her out, pulled her on the table, and put the, put the power on she didn't deserve to die, but I couldn't let her leave. I just couldn't. But then I couldn't take off her medicine, take her off the medicine, so I took everything I could. Her camera and her faba, and I dumped them at the cemetery. I didn't want my parents to be in even more trouble. If it were not for that damn blackout, you would have never known. Percy Wolcraft, you are here today to answer for the brutal murder of Claire Godwin. What do you have to say for your defense? My little baby did nothing wrong. He protected his family like any loving son would have. Be strong, Percy. I'm sorry, Mommy. I didn't want to put you in any trouble. Didn't want to put you in any trouble. I'm sorry. You didn't, my son. While I may disapprove of your actions, I know they come from a good place. I'm proud of you, son. Silence in the court. I'm not finished with you two. We'll talk about your offenses later. Percy Wolcraft, you killed this poor woman in cold blood while she was trying to report a criminal endeavor, and the only guilt you show is towards your parents. She wanted to destroy us. She wanted to destroy my family. I would kill her a hundred times more if I had to. Percy Wolcraft, 
I now condemn you to 30 years in prison for the murder of Claire Godwin without the possibility of parole. Court dismissed. So there it is, Matthew. Claire fell victim to the most dysfunctional family in Grimsboro, and I thought my folks were messed up. She was only trying to do what was right, and she got killed for it. But then I wonder if Percy could have ended up any different. When resurrecting a dead dog is the biggest proof of love your parents can give each other, how are you supposed to turn out okay? Look at the other ones. Constance Bell, clear from the start. Victor Wolcroft, not six feet tall. Ivan Imlay, doesn't speak English. Fran Wolcroft, blue eyes, not brown. It was the son, Percy. I'll see you guys for the additional investigation. All right, it's time for the additional investigation of the Wolcroft's creature. Ranger Matthew, thank you for your hard work. This investigation would have gone to the dogs without you. This reminds me, I just got a call from the pet cemetery's manager, Ivan Imlay. He says the cemetery has been vandalized. I need you to go check up on this. And then you have to stop by the museum. Mrs. Bell expressly requested your help there. She was vehement about... Impossible. Constance doesn't even recognize me as a functioning adult. Why would she want us to help her? Actually, Mrs. Bell only mentioned Ranger Matthew, but I heard her mumble something about ketchup. Anyway, you should get to work now. Hey, Matthew, I've been, work I've been thinking about Victor Wallcraft and his crazy machine, and I'm worried he might have built some other dangerous device in his lab. Also, well, I'm super curious to see what other kind of invention he's built up, I admit it. Still, I think it would be safer to pay him a visit. Would you like to come with me? Talk to Victor Wallcraft first. Ranger Matthew, to what do I owe the displeasure of having you inspect my house again? Well, I like to take a look at your machines. I'm the one who analyzed the one Ranger Matthew took from the garage. Ha! Huh, but see if you could understand how my inventions work by yourself. Since I like to invent my own machines during my free time too, I think I'm more than capable of... Please! As if your petty little robots could compare to my stupendous inventions. Come in. You can observe my machines as long as you want. I highly doubt you'll understand them anyway. Alright, Matthew, let's show that pre pretentious prick who we are. With you, I'm sure we can discover whatever he's working on in this garage. machine. What did you find, Matthew? I don't know what this machine is exactly. I've never seen anything like this. I know how to activate it, though. See that little screen here? We need the password, but I guess cracking it won't be a problem for you. That's not bad, 16. Awesome, Matthew. You cracked that machine's code in a flash. No technology in this room could be a hurdle to your talent. Let me see this machine. I'll need to run some tests in my lab just to be sure of what it does.
moment. Okay. This is six hours. Let's help Constance Bell. Ranger Matthew, thank you for coming so quickly. I'm facing a huge I'm facing a huge issue here in the museum. What's going on, Mrs. Bell? Are you alright? Did someone die again? What? No, nobody's dead, of course. No need to be over dramatic, David Jones. Why would there always be a murder? My problem is less human. If I dare say, you, you see, I was checking everything in the museum after its closing time when I noticed some weird prints on the ground. They look like animal prints. Animal prints? Can you imagine? It means an animal profaned that sacred place of culture and knowledge. But I can't fathom how it happened, because I never let any animal enter the museum's ground. You must take a look at those prints, Ranger Matthew, and identify that animal. Still haven't done a times six thing on the other two crime scenes yet, but I will. There's the animal prints. Nice. Well done, Matthew. Here are the animal prints Constance told us about. Those look like a bird's claws prints to me, but I'm not sure. There's an electronic display over there showing prints from pretty much every animal ever. We can compare our prints with the data to identify our culprit species. One, two, three, there we are, 16 again, a dodo, what, a dodo, I thought those were extinct, so how did those dodos prints appear in the museum, we should tell our conclusions to Constance, she won't believe us. A dodo? Come on, Ranger Matthew, dodos have been extinct for centuries. I know what kind of absurdity to expect from Jones, but coming from you, this is disappointing. What do you mean absurd? I mean, we know this is hard to believe, but those prints really belong to a dodo. Ranger Matthew can't be wrong about this. Well, there is a dodo reproduction in the exhibit. Let me see. Oh, the ruffians. Someone inked the dodo's paws. I bet the bandits, they created those prints for fun. I bet. David Jones, did you have something to do with those absurdities? Of course not. Ranger Matthew can testify. I bet the person who made the prints just wanted to have fun. Maybe you should organize a game with animal prints for the children in the museum. So more of those noisy youngsters would come? Over my dead body? They make enough damage as it is. Stop spitting nonsense, David Jones, and let me give a reward to Ranger Matthew on behalf of the museum.
Ranger Matthew, I'm glad they sent you. My cemetery has been vandalized. I was doing my daily routine taking care of the graves as usual when I noticed two or three young men at the gate. I didn't pay them attention thinking they were here to mourn their pet. But then I heard a big noise. Just as I looked towards the entrance, the cemetery sculpture and those vandals had vanished. They've probably destroyed it. And now I can't find the sculpture. I've looked around the cemetery but didn't find anything. Please, Ranger Matthew, can you look for it too? I didn't do these two yet, but I will soon. Broken statue. Done, Matthew. Those marble chunks could be the sculpture those juvenile offenders broke. We can't give it back to Ivan like this. Do you think you can repair it? As usual, nothing is too complicated to restore for you, Matthew. The cemetery can have its washful sculpture back. Let's show your work to Ivan. Here you go, Ivan. Ranger Matthew found and restored your sculpture. The cemetery can go back to its usual routine now. Thank you so much, Ranger Matthew. After all, what will be... What will be Ellington Pet Cemetery without Ellington itself? William Cooper's dog was the main reason this place and later the dog pageant were created. And given the district pe district's people of people's obsession with the dog pageant, I don't think they take the destruction of this symbol very well. That being said, Ranger Matthew, do you really plan to go see the dog pageant in those clothes? This won't do. You need something less common to impress the citizens. Alright, I'll let the activated machine run its course. See you all for that. Alright folks, we're back. Let's get the results of the activated machine. Matthew, I did it. I found out what Victor's machine does. It's totally harmless, which is good. It was also unfinished. I had to complete a structure myself to make it function. Anyway, call me the high tech king, because thanks to my engineering and programming knowledge, I can tell you that this machine has been designed to make burgers. I'm not kidding, Matthew. This machine is impressive. It's a piece of art, and I would know. I fixed it myself. Come with me. We have to talk about it with Victor. Let's tell Victor Woolcraft. So, what did you do to my machine? I hope you didn't damage it in your vain attempts to comprehend my genius. I spent a lot of time working on this one. You can relax, Mr. Wallcraft. Your burger maker is intact. Actually, I even finished it. It is a nice machine. Finding good enough parts is a real challenge. You finished it? I can't believe it. Let me see. What kind of rotors did you put in? They fit perfectly. That was my only missing piece. You have to tell me where you found those. Everybody in this town seems weirdly attracted to burgers. I thought they could use such a machine. Let's try to make ourselves some good burgers. The ingredients go here. This is the sauce button, the cheese menu. A 
I'm very happy you visited, Ranger Matthew. I already knew you were a very good ranger, but now I'm starting to think your team is full of geniuses. But as pleasurable as talking with right-brained people is, I must leave. Since Percy is in jail, Fran is sadder than ever. Anyway, I hope you'll like my machine's burgers. Here, why don't you take three? And I get three burgers here. Cool. That was good. But first... I got me some new sticker packs to open. Fifteen, actually. And I found out that when you make it up to a hundred... ...of the recycle ones right here... It turns into a single sticker pack. I still would like them to, uh... Still include the burger rewards. Include the food rewards with the sticker packs. Already a quarter way there. Only three new stickers. I will also go ahead and say that any, from now on, all collection modes that I decide to do will be off camera. Let's see. That's the one. Now 
I got quite a bunch. Okay. All right, that'll do, and I'll see you all for the next case. See y'all then.